Welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Founded in 1938, Bible Tracks seeks to take the gospel to all the world. Our teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. For more information about Bible Tracks, go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. And now our teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Track Echo. Thanks so much for joining us. I congratulate you on making it to Friday. I hope you had a good week, not only doing your your earthly responsibilities, but you've been cultivating your relationship with Jesus Christ, cultivating it in private time with him, cultivating it with other fellow believers, and even sharing the gospel orally and with gospel tracts with lost people. I hope it's been a good week for you. Now, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ephesians chapter four. If you can reach over and pick up your own copy of God's word and join me there, Ephesians four verses 14 to 16 will be our focus today. And also with your Bible open, if you can get something to take some notes with, I'll be reviewing an outline and adding to that outline to help make the passage, hopefully a greater have greater understanding for you. But with that pen and paper handy, you can jot down our contact information, which will be given as the program comes to a close. What's going to happen here is that you're going to be given our phone number and other methods by which you can give to us your name and and address. I want to send you a sample packet which contains over 40 gospel tracts in it. This is a gospel tract, a short written presentation explaining God's plan of salvation. Now, this happens to be a gospel tract entitled Infant Baptism? Question mark. What does the Bible say? Infant baptism, what does the Bible say? Oh, dear friend, do you realize how many people are depending and hoping to get into heaven because when they were a baby, their parents, grandparents, aunt, uncle, somebody, they gathered around and that individual child was baptized by some method or another, and that is what they're banking on to get into heaven. Friend, you can be baptized by every church under God's blue sky, but if you've never personally, knowingly received Christ as Savior, you are unfit for heaven. Water doesn't make you fit. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. You must, by faith, receive Christ as Savior. That's what this gospel tract confronts. Friend, you know what the Bible says about infant baptism? Absolutely nothing. You know what it says about receiving Christ as Savior? Oh, that, my friend, is what the Bible focuses on. Please, get the sample packet. Get this track from us. You're going to find as you read the tracks, you're going to be more effective in telling the gospel, and you're going to find the tracks in there that will really encourage you to give the gospel to other people. So be ready when my announcer gives that contact information. Before I begin reading at verse 14 here, let me lead in this way. I hope you have lamented over the years of all the various cults and isms that are out there on the religious scene. The average American Christian is all too often too easily uh, confused by all the slick and frankly authoritarian uh, uh, religious teachers that are out there. There's a story told of a janitor that worked at a large church, and he was bemoaning the frustrations of his job. And one day he explained those to one of his friends. After hearing all the frustrating things that the janitor had to deal with, his friend said to him, how in the world do you manage uh, to uh, when you're given so many conflicting instructions? The janitor simply replied, well, I put my brain in neutral and just let them push me around. Oh, you and I as believers cannot afford to respond to all the conflicting religious voices the way that janitor dealt with all of his instructions. Our passage today is going to tell us that Christ does not want us uh, or any member of his body to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Jesus gives to his church gifted people so that we can know not only what truth is, 
but who is telling the truth? It's not Jesus's plan that we be confused as we walk through all these isms of doctrinal beliefs and offerings that are out there today. That's our focus here. Get your Bible and join me. I'm turning now to Ephesians 4, verse 14 and 15, 16 says this, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They want to deceive God's people. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, into Christ, in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love." Now, we have been in verses 1 through 16 of Ephesians 4 for a number of broadcasts, and I've divided those 16 verses up into four parts. Here they are. Verses 1, 2, and 3 I called our calling, our calling. Notice the C word there. Verses 4, 5, and 6, I call that our connection. Verses 7 to 13, our commander, obviously referring to Jesus Christ. But now, verses 14 to 16, our Christ-likeness. Now, these 16 verses answer one key question. The question is, how do we believers live in the church so that it practices genuine unity. The first three chapters talked about spiritual unity. Now we're supposed to practice that unity on a local level. How do we do that? Now, one key part of the answer we've seen is that God has given gifts and gifted people to his church. He's provided that so we can be a unified people. As the body of Christ lives and works and teaches, everyone in the body will be growing into Christ's likeness. Now, here in verses 14 to 16, we see the results of a church that's functioning as it ought. The result is this. God's saints will be spiritual children no longer. Now, I'm going to be using three words beginning with the letter S, one word for each of the verses here. For verse 14, it's the word studied. For verse 15, it's the word speaking. And for verse 16, it's the word serving. The body of Christ, even the local church, is to be a studied body, a speaking body, and a serving body. Let's take them one at a time. Verse 14, the studied body. Now, all who know Jesus Christ as Savior are to be in the process of maturing to be like Jesus Christ. When we came to Jesus Christ at salvation, we came as babes in the things of the gospel and spiritual things. But we don't stay that way. But if we don't study God's word personally, and we don't be un- we're not under the ministry of God's gospel teaching. Bible teaching people, we are going to become easily confused and twisted by false teachers and deceptive teachers. I'm sure by now you realize that you cannot trust every teacher on the radio, every preacher on television, and every pastor standing in the pulpit. Verse 14 says that there were even in the day in which the book of Ephesians were written, religious teachers who were using deception, craftiness, and inventing new ways to blow people, including saints, off the course of truth. We must be students of God's word. Again, personal students, as well as sitting under the teaching ministry of a truly godly given pastor teacher. That's verse 14, a studied body. Verse 15, we need to be a speaking body. A key means, a critical means of not being blown off course when it comes to truth and going into doctrinal error is to be involved in a local church that is lovingly speaking truth into your life. I need that to this day, and so do you. Consistently talking about the Bible truth is a sure way to stay away from uh, the doctrinal errors that are out there and that abound. Recently, I was speaking in a missions conference, and over a meal, a couple asked me about what I'd seen in churches as I travel around the country, and particularly, they wanted to know the weakness that I had seen. My answer included three things. Number one, 
the lack of real prayer meetings. Number two, the lack of real evangelism training. And number three, the lack of solid doctrinal teaching. Now, to be sure, there are a number of churches that do these three things very, very well, but their their number is not uh, as, as strong as it needs to be. There needs to be so many more of these. When local church saints have actual prolonged discussions about Bible truth and do so with their Bibles open in front of them, that's a church where you're going to find people growing into Christ-likeness as they ought. Now, verse 16, my word is serving. We need to be a serving body. Verse 16 says, from whom, speaking of Christ, from Christ, the whole body, fitly joined together, fitly adjusted, and compacted or knit together by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working, effectual energy, in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. There are three things that stand out front and center to me in this verse. Number one is this. The body is a rightly formed body by Christ, a rightly formed body. When he saves a sinner, he places them in the body in the right place with the right gifts. Secondly, the body is a rigorously working body. Every believer has a gift by God's grace, verse 7 says, and every believer has a measured portion of working power. The verse does not say that some people get more energy to serve than others do. But in truth, what happens is too many believers don't use the energy God's given to them for service, and it looks like others have more energy. The third thing I see is this. The body is regularly and or steadily growing into Christ-likeness. Now, it's, we're told here that the body is edifying itself unto greater maturity, listen now, in love. In love. Those two words, in love, speak of uh, the instrumentality of what makes this growing process happen, what fosters it to happen. Maybe I could put it this way, and it comes out uh, with a greater clarity. Love in the body of Christ, at, in the universal body and in the local body, love in the body is the soil out from which a crop of mature believers will grow. Oh, friend, you and I who know Christ need to be growing in him. Perhaps you're listening today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I have the good news for you and bad news. The bad news is you are a sinner. You're dead in your sins and you're unfit for heaven and there's nothing you can do about it. You are sick with a sin cancer and you can't heal yourself. The good news is there's a great master doctor named Jesus Christ. He came with the specific skills, the holy son of God, the sinless God-man came, took on flesh and dwelt among us. We celebrate that at Christmas time, but he came for the purpose to seek and save sinners that he might redeem them, buy them out of their cancerous sin, death state and make them children of God by cleansing them of all sin when they receive him by faith as their personal savior. If you've never done that today, today, right now is when you ought to do that. Amen. Thank you for watching Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our Bible Tracks, please write us at P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702, or call us at 309 828 6888. You can also visit our website at BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.